Hello and welcome back to Beyond the Harbor R. It's been a while since I did a, an episode on this. And um, I think I stopped because it was only up to like chapter 3. And I hadn't seen that they had updated it. But as far as I can tell that there's at least chapter 4 and chapter 5, I think. So yeah. And since I need something to record, I'm going to record this. <laughs> um, yeah. Anywho... So, I'm trying to remember what happened last time. So, I know that this guy, and I already forgot his name, um, uh, he was trying to discover what happened to somebody. I think his name was Oliver. And, um, the story is presented kind of, um, mixed in that we get the perspective of what's happening to Oliver or what's going to happen to him. And then it switches over to this guy as he's trying to figure out what happened. But he's also getting memories of Oliver. I think his name is Oliver. I'm pretty... I'm hoping that it's not something else. Or Ollie, I think. Ollie? I don't know. But anyways, um, it's it's a rat guy, I think. Or a possum. Is it a possum? I don't remember. Anyways, um, yeah. So, this dude right here has somebody helping him. And... They are useful, if a bit, um, much. <laughs> um, and they also contacted this iguana person, and I'm totally blanking on the names right now, I'm sorry. And he has information, but he seems scared to reveal it. And that's all I remember right now, so... If you want to go back and, you know, watch the previous Beyond the Harbor R episodes, and they are shortish... So, you know, it's not too much that you have to, you know, rewatch or watch if you haven't seen it already. Um, I'll put a link, you know, up on the corner, that little thingy that always pops up on the side, on the top. Um, you know, so you could watch the other previous episodes. But yeah. Anywho, so if you don't know anything about it, it does have a little bit of, I want to call it echo vibes, but that just means that it's like a mystery, but there's some like sort of strange supernatural thing going on in the background. Um, but yeah. As far as I've seen, there's no monsters or anything like that, but still. It's some black ooze. Anywho, um, I think that's just a metaphor. But yeah. So, yeah. Let's continue and, you know, see what's gonna happen. The cold, gentle moonlight illuminates my face as I attempt to read the hastily scrawled out note in front of me. After midnight, beach alone. Despite probably being the least important thing I'd gleaned from it, the first thing that I'd noticed was how tiny and neat the lizard's handwriting was. His handwriting was particularly girlish, for lack of a better term. I pass another lone streetlight as I neatly fold a note and place it back into my pocket. Hey, what's that? I jumped as the cat's voice pulls me from my thoughts. Ah. <clears throat> I crumple up the note and shove it back into my pocket with as much haste as I can afford. What's... what? He chuckles. You were staring at something, weren't you? Something important, no doubt, considering how intensely you were looking at it. I put on a fake smile. Oh, that. Nah, just some trash that I had in my pocket. <laughs> he cocks an eyebrow. Just trash? Uh, yeah, Mama wrote me a grocery list last week, and I held on to it, I, I guess. Uh-huh. His grin returns in full force. That must be an intense grocery list. A bead of sweat rolls down my forehead as I try to come up with some panic excuses when suddenly... It's in Spanish. I wipe my forehead. My Spanish is really rusty. <laughs> But Mama insists I practice, you know? He places a finger on his chin. Ah, is that so? He squints his eyes, his shaky grin widening as he takes a step closer to me. Well, I think it's pretty stupid. I try to lean back on the wall, but if I get any closer to it, we'd merge to become a single being. Makes me think of back when I was a kid. Mom and I flew out the country for the first time, all the way over to Hong Kong. 
Her brother or something had died. I don't remember. Didn't care. Something about face. But while I was there, I met my grandmother for the first time. He takes a merciful step back, giving me a bit of room to breathe as he elaborates, completely unprompted. That woman was absolutely insufferable. Barely spoke English, spent most of the time wagging her finger at me. Mom obviously hated her too. Nearly as soon as we arrived, they had an argument, and she took off, leaving me with her. She didn't say anything before she left. I was just sort of stranded. He paused for a moment. Fuck that bitch. Anyways, my grandmother decided that she was my primary caregiver now, and put me right on her Cantonese regiment. I, of course, had zero interest in learning a useless language. I stare at him. Surely it wouldn't have been useless. I mean, if your family speaks it. Like I said, useless. I frown. Okay. He shrugs his shoulders, blowing out a small sigh as he does. She sits me down in the windowless room and forces me to practice the alphabet. That shit was miserable. I hated just about every second of it. His voice trails off, and after about 40 seconds of silence, I chime back in. So, um, uh, what did you do? He snaps back, returning from his short trip down memory lane. Nothing. I blink. Uh, nothing? Yeah. I was just sort of stuck there. Had to obey if I wanted to keep getting fed and whatever. If I wanted to eat, I'd have to ask for it in her stupid language. Lasted about 40 hours in that room before I cracked. I was so determined to. I had convinced myself that if I dropped dead in that room, that awful woman's head would grow. After about a few days, I began to lose track of time. I furrowed my brow, but he continues before I could interject. Eventually, Mom came back to pick me up. I'm pretty sure that bitch wanted to keep me there for more than just a summer, but Mom said no, and they got into another huge argument. Mom won out in the end, of course. I'm here now, aren't I? I fold my arms. And that was the end of it. His gaze grows a little more distant as he continues to remember. She tried to convince me to stay with her, said it was my choice. Uh, she said. I can't read Cantonese. His trademark smirk returns to his face in full force. I responded. He laughs, leaving me completely out of the loop. Uh, what does that mean? He opens one eye as he stares at me down, a sly smile adorning his face. Don't worry about it, detective. It's not relative to the case, I promise. He takes another step closer to me. You know, I haven't told that story in a long time. You've got this thing about you that I really like. I brace myself as he takes another step, inching yet closer to my face. You're kind of a dullard, but even when you're trying your best to be deceitful, you've got this genuine quality to you. And you've got such a pretty face. His final step forward is the most brazen yet, and I feel his wet breath on my nose. I remain silent, trying to keep my expression neutral as he reaches a wayward hand out towards me. Heh. <laughs> It takes almost all of my willpower not to flinch as his finger brushes against my cheek. Are you not used to getting compliments? He pulls away, revealing a single tear now stuck to his finger. Guys typically don't cry when someone says something nice to them. More surprised than the cat, I reach up to my own face and feel that familiar wetness. What the? He chuckles, shrugging again. Just as surprised as me? I close my eyes, causing more tears to slide down my cheeks. I... I didn't realize, no. I shake my head. I was nervous, sure, but... I think... I'm gonna take a walk. Hmm. You had plans? I blink, more tears streaming down my face as I do. What? 
It's already after midnight. I squint. I, I don't know what you're... What, you want me to come with you? Sorry, I'm gonna have to pass. A moonlight escapade sounds romantic and all, but I have some other things to take care of. I... Okay. I fold my arms, but he just falls back onto his bed in surprise. Sorry, as much as I enjoy your company, some things just come first. I sigh. Well, if you insist. I'll be back in a little while. He limply waves at me as I pass his bed. Even now, as the events unfold in my memories, everything feels off. Sam is... strange. It's hard to get a read on anything he does. He jumps between being oddly genuine and absolutely full of shit. Am I... out of my league? I raise my free hand to my cheek again, and sure enough, another tear. How unbelievably frustrating. I feel instant gratification as soon as my feet have left the pavement and dig into the sand of the beach. It's a little embarrassing, but I've been in such a rush to escape the hotel room that I'd forgotten to put on my shoes. I wasn't exactly used to walking around barefoot, but whatever, I'll learn. Is it even a skill worth learning? Besides, the last time that I was here, Sam and I took off our shoes anyway. I just have to be careful walking on the, the way back. I did pass by some glass, but otherwise the little town was surprisingly litter-free. I have to be careful not to leave any bloody footprints tonight. Eh, good evening. You know, I'm not usually one to talk to the moon, but... I'm a drifter tonight, too. And some part of me deep down feels right doing it. Get a hold of yourself, detective. Nothing good will come out of chatting up the moon, for fuck's sake. <laughs> the cool evening breeze sweeps over the beach, strong enough to gently rustle my fur, but not quite enough to blow the sand I kick up as I walk. I'd always been afraid of traveling, of growing up. Mama was protective. She wanted to keep me safe even if it meant missing out on some things most other kids did. I never went to camp. I had a strict curfew, and she made sure that she knew where I was whenever I went out. While I was planning this trip, I felt like shit lying to Mama. She seemed really proud of me for taking an opportunity, but I could tell that she was worried to death about me. Why she hasn't tried to call me yet, I couldn't tell you. I hope she's okay. Maybe... Maybe I'll send her a message in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry I'm bothering you. You've probably heard millions of stories more interesting than mine, considering how long you've been around. There are a lot of colorful people in this world of yours, don't you think? Speaking of... There, silhouetted in the pale moonlight, stood the final witness. I can hear his heartbeat even from here. The beautiful chaotic rhythm of a man who's been here all along. Just a short pace from the dock stood a tall silhouette, with rounded spikes resting atop his head in a neat row. I walk closer to him, but not wanting to startle the iguana, I cautiously call out to him in a small voice. Trevor? It's me, JC. I stand in place waiting for a response that never comes. Trevor? I call out again, taking another step closer to him. But still, nothing. Not sure what else I could say, I reach out to him and touch his shoulder. Stiff. Cold. Trevor? I walk in front of him, trying to get a good look at his face. It appears to be frozen, his wide green eyes reflecting the moon right back at me. I scan the beach for something, anything that could have caused them to freeze up like this, when I remember. The dock that I... B -b -b My thoughts are interrupted by a quiet whimper from the man just in front of me. My gaze is drawn immediately to his eye, still reflecting the moon back at me, as a single tear rose down from it. Was he... Ah, he sputters as he hunches over. T -t Tonight is... He coughs violently. T Trevor. I mumble quietly as he breathes heavily, a thin strand of drool leaking from the base of his lips. Uh, uh, uh -huh. A little glint of light shines off of his tallest head spine as he slowly turns his head to face me. You... 
He doubles over, still out of breath. You... Uh... He shakes his head. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He stands back up straight, wiping his face with his forearm, as he does. I... Uh... I shake my head, stepping towards him. Please, it's okay. There's no need to apologize. Earlier, I saw... I cough. I'm not the smartest guy on the planet, but I could see something else going on. He wanted to talk with me alone. I place a hand on my chest, resting my gaze as gently as I can onto the iguana. Thank you for trusting me, Trevor. An uneasy laugh escapes the iguana's throat. Ah! <laughs> Please! He shakes his head. What matters is that you came... A small but genuine smile spreads across his face, and I feel the gravity of the situation slowly ease off of my heart. I think his is the first genuine smile that I've seen since I've arrived here. Trevor? I reach my hand out and place it on his shoulder. He flinches at first, but after he feels how soft my touch is, he eases up. Is everything okay? His pale green eyes stare back into mine for a moment before he closes them and slowly shakes his head. No, it isn't. He continues, eyes still closed. Ever since... Uh, that... Nothing's been the same. I gently rub his shoulder. That... Do you mean all these disappearance? He nods his head, his brow wrinkling as he does. Yeah. I want to help. I lift my right arm and place it on his other shoulder. That's the reason I'm here. I want to help things get back to normal. He frowns, opening his eyes back up. You said as much back at my house. But why? What do you have to gain from all of this? I blink. Well... I shrug my shoulders. I heard about the case online and I looked into it. Nothing added up for me. Next to no news coverage, no statements from the family. The police investigation formally ended only two days after he was reported missing. Nothing added up. I frown. And that didn't feel... fair. After I'd arrived here, all my suspicions felt even more justified. Nothing about this story adds up. Every time I learn something new about Oliver, ten more questions pop up. I shudder as a particularly chilly breeze runs through my fur. If everything Sam's told me is true, Oliver is a social outcast, and he's been for this entire life. But that doesn't mean that he deserves to just be forgotten about. I mean, for fuck's sake, he could still be out there somewhere. My lips curve into a smile. I want to try to save him, Trevor. Just like you do. His eyes sink back towards the sand. I saw yesterday when he came up. There was genuine emotions. You care about him. You and I may be the last two people on this earth that do. He stares back at me, tears welling up in his eyes. I... He gulps. I... I followed him. There was something... Something about him. He shakes his head. I felt something I'd never felt before when I saw him. I don't know how to describe it. I genuinely can't. I tilt my head as his voice trails off. Did you... Love him? He closes his eyes, tears rolling down his cheeks. I... I don't think so. It's more like... I'm just not... Good. At processing those sort of feelings. He shakes his head again, his this time a bit more somber. I've never shared a single word with him. I used to watch him. His brow ridge twitches as he speaks. In school, I'd always stand away from him in the hallway. We'd never had any classes together despite being in the same grade. I, I wish we did. He offers a single chuckle. Maybe it's for the best that we didn't. 
I already had a hard time focusing in school. Feeling his discomfort again, I give in to his desires and let go of his shoulders. I'll have to remember all of this to write down in my notebook later. It was... strange. When I saw him, it felt like something inside of me was waking up. That I could... remember. He trails off there, but I fold my arms and keep my eyes locked onto his. Remember? What did you remember? He shakes his head. It didn't make any sense, but I would sometimes remember things that never happened. I have memories of spending time with him. B bad memories. He turns away from me, instead looking out towards the bay. B my dad. He knew who Ollie was. I fold my arms, not particularly happy with this sudden topic change, but making a mental note to ask about these memories again later. How so? He... The iguana lets out a long, raspy sigh. He was... He chokes on his words, breathing out a sharp and immediate puff of air. M my dad... I recoil in shock as his hands suddenly grasp onto his face, and he begins shaking violently. No. No, 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 no. He digs his fingers deeper into his scales as he mumbles under his breath. Not now. His shaking slows down as the flow of time returns to normal, and the intensity of the night air finally registers in my mind. My first instinct had been rush forward and... The iguana begins to speak again, voice trembling as he does. My dad, he hated Ollie. He sighs again, visibly shaking as he does. He would complain about things I couldn't understand. He always complained ever since Ollie's family moved here. He'd get home from work and... His words cut off at his throat. He used to hold up in his office and scream... He was... afraid. Once I started following Ollie, my dad... You? What have you? Why have you? Why can't I smell it on you today? My son! My own son! And after that, he started... He... <laughs> His words catch again, but this time, the silence is followed by a loud creak. The iguana's body then doubles over, but without a single thought, my feet move and I rush forward to catch him. The impact is heavy, his thoroughly abused body crumbling under his own weight. Using all the strength that I can muster, I hold them there, and as tight as I can. There is a long period of silence as neither of us dare to speak. The only sound that I can hear over the waves is the pummeling of my heart in my ears, adjusting to the beat in tune with the man that I was holding. There was a beautiful symphony in our embrace, one that could potentially heal. I feel the warmth of his tears soaking into my shirt, a solemn reminder of my role in all of this. And after the moon-soaked melancholy fully sets in, I return his motion, wrapping my own arms around his body. His arms tremble, grasping for whatever support that I can offer. There's another, much softer grip on my shoulder, though. I turn my head to look, but... The pale glow of the moonlight highlights it for what it may be the first time revealing the tender grip of the lonely heart. There, torn from the heavens, the brilliant soul of another makes its solemn plea cling to me. Bruh. Another warm tear rolls down my cheek, mouth left agape by the chilling beauty of the fractured voice. I gave it an answer the only way my petrified body could. I wished that I could still save him. I wished it with all of my heart. Bruh.
I remain still as I feel an unexpected cold sensation cascade down my back. Cold. Wet. My head. No. Focus. Focus, detective. Trevor. I can't hear you anymore. can feel him. He's close. Oliver? So close. Oliver, are you there? Guide me, please. Show me once again. Ah, there you are. My eyes are open again. I'm greeted by the bright white fur of my face that remains familiar. Oliver, did you pass out? I didn't. Ugh. She looks down at me, confused but relieved. I wanted to make sure that you weren't. Your eyes were open, but you didn't look like you were all there. She shakes her head before taking a seat next to me. Any idea why you're so tired? My eyes lids begin to sink as I sigh. Not really. There's an audible pop as my bottom jaw loosens. Just tired. We sit in silence for a moment before she breaks it with a sigh. Not sure what I was expecting, honestly. I've known you for most of my life, and yet... She pauses, considering her words. Maybe this is a little too forward, but seeing you again has got me remembering a lot. You've always been distant. You've never opened up without me telling you to. Hmm. Even if it was for your own good, it never felt right to pry back then. My eyes remain fixed on a nearby trash can as she speaks. Back then, I was obsessed with the future, mostly my future, but I cared a lot about yours too. You had a spark. Something was different about you, I could tell. But as we got older, that light vanished. I close my eyes. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have brought this up right now, of all times. You're probably going through a lot too. And I tend to overanalyze things. Damn, you think? I shake my head. No, it's okay. I probably deserve it. There's a relative quiet for a moment before I hear her voice pick back up. You know, I was thinking earlier, if I had gotten you up earlier, we could have stopped by the sirens. My treat. My brain stutters and I blink. Uh, didn't we go there before we came here? I turn my head, reconnecting our gazes. She has a deep look of confusion in her eyes. The cafe? No. I woke you up at home, and we drove out here to the bus station. Err. We didn't have time to go to the cafe. Don's bus was going to arrive around one. 
I try to recall the events of this morning, but there's a deep wriggling sensation inside of my brain, memories being whisked away and beaten together. I went out to the cafe to meet you, but you were running late. Eh? She cuts me off, audibly confused. What are you talking about? Are you trying to gaslight me or something? She frowns. Because honestly, you're kind of terrible at it. I rub my temples, closing my eyes and trying my hardest to remember. I waited outside with... The names deep within my clouded mind were fragments of what they used to be, just on the tip of my tongue and yet... Wasn't... Wasn't Sam here? The bear looks back at me, puzzled. Sam? Sam who? I rub my forehead. Samuel... Samuel the, the... the cat. Her eyes widen. Samuel Wong? The tone of her voice raises significantly as that name passes her lips. From high school? Why the hell would I even hang out with that creep? She folds her arms, squinting at me in disgust. Let alone invite him to my grandmother's service? I shake my head, trying to remember. You didn't. He... Uh, he stayed the night with me last night and invited himself. I was... Broken memories continue leaking out of my mouth. He... He tried to kiss me, but I... The towel and... The bear's brow folds inward, her lips pursed. Do you have some kind of trauma you're re-experiencing right now? Are you okay? I can't. Ugh. I'm beset by another spell of dizziness, this time more intense than the last. More vague, faceless people passes as we sit in silence, neither of us even making eye contact. V. Don. D sure. Ollie? I remain silent as her voice trails off again. T -t -t Trevor. No. No. I've never known anyone named Trevor. Why do I... Ollie, please, for the love of God, can you tell me what's going on with you? Something. I shake my head. N no. I'm sorry. I can only do my best to shake away the lingering doubts in my mind. I'm just really confused right now. The bear sitting beside me sighs, and I feel some tension melt off of her. That's what I was talking about. Every time I try to reach out to you, both of you, you'd always just swap me away. I hold my head in my hands and scoot away. J just give me a minute. She only sighs again, folding her arms and pointing her nose to the sky. We sit like that for a while, the ambience of the buses coming and going, the only other constant. It's then that I feel an old ache start to tear its way through my veins again. My neck cracks loudly as I lift my head in haste, suddenly aware of the arrival. He's here. Shortly following my head, my body jumps up to alert. Is it time? My tail follows the trend, stiffening between my legs. I know what's coming. Yeah, I feel it too. My arm rises, my long, bony index finger curling as it does. It's all hollow. No other arm raised in sync with mine. No other fingers mark the destination. I am alone. The bear sitting beside me watches, her eyes cold and distant. We watch as the door of the blue bus opens. More faceless people of various shapes and sizes exit, nobody worth remembering. And then the flow of nobody stops altogether. My heart sinks into my stomach. I've been here before. I know exactly how it, this goes. And yet... Silence. The whole bus station goes silent for an entire moment. There, amidst the silence, another figure stands in the doorway. No. Not you. Anyone but you. End of 
Chapter 4. I do believe that's where we're going to leave it for today. Uh, no, 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 no. There we go. Um, so yeah. That was the end of Chapter 4. So, as I was reading it, I was recalling like what was going on. So yeah. Um, so this guy's playing detective. He's trying to figure out what's happened to uh, Ollie. I forgot his name. I remember his... I remember they say his name, but I forgot it. Um, and he's doing it because he's he's like playing at a as an amateur detective slash police guy. And um, Sam or Samuel, the uh, what I'm assuming is one of those like Siamese cats, um, is helping him, quote unquote, because he is from this area from this town, and he know well he has some information about what happened. But he's being very, like, cagey about revealing information. He's sort of using it so that he can hang around this guy. And he's a big flirt. He flirts with, like, everyone. Anyways, but at the same time, like, this guy and Ollie go back and forth and share, like, memories. And what uh, Ollie was saying, I think, is what happened in the previous um, episodes or videos that I did, I mean, or chapters, I guess. And, um, he is, like, remembering someone else's memories. So I'm assuming what's happening is that between Trevor, this dude, and Ollie, they're, like, going back and forth between each other's memories, or at least between Ollie's memories and their memories. So Ollie is remembering things that are happening to them, and they are remembering things that are happening to Ollie. Hmm... Which is an interesting thing, I guess. You know, well, not I guess. Yeah, it is interesting because technically, what's happening to Ollie happened in the past, and what's happening to these guys is in the present. So you know, that's an interesting thing to think about. But yeah, um, but actually, that's just my theory, though. I don't know if that's actually true because I don't really remember what happened in the previous videos or chapters. I remember something of what Ollie was saying did happen. I think. Because he's remembering Trevor, but he doesn't know Trevor. Even Trevor said, like, that they never interacted, that they didn't have any classes together or anything. So how does he remember someone that he's never had um, interactions with's name? And what else? Um, he, he remembers Sam. And, I mean, they might have had some interactions, but I doubt it. Because even the V was like, ew. Like, I would never, you know, be around that guy. So it's like, why would Ollie be? Hmm. Um, but yeah. Anywho, so... I'm assuming that you guys have either already seen the previous chapters, read the previous chapters, or whatever. So, based on that, what do you think is happening? Because that's the thing I like about Beyond the Harbor R, which I really wish, you know, other people, you know, watch these videos or read the story yourselves. Because it's a really interesting story, and it's like, like a mystery... Kind of has something supernatural going on, but it's not like horror. It's just, it's basically mystery. You know, that's my comparison with Echo. It only means that there's a mystery going on. You don't know what's going on, but I'm not saying that because, you know, there's monsters or whatever, at least as far as I can tell yet. But yeah. So I really hope that people, when you watch these videos, at least give it a chance. You know, watch the first ones. They're they're short, kind of like this one. And then, you know, watch this one and the one that comes after this one. Because, you know, there's another chapter, obviously. Because, you know, I really like the story. And I really want to keep doing it for YouTube. But if you guys don't watch it, then... Unfortunately, there's no point in doing it. Because, you know, it's just... Yeah. I, I, I could read it for myself. But, you know... Sometimes it feels like if you read a visual novel for yourself, it's like, well, why don't I just record it while I'm doing it? Because <laughs> uh, it's content. Anyways, um, but yeah, again, you know, please at least give it a chance and, you know, watch the previous videos if you haven't already or if you want to refresh what's happening and, you know, watch this one and then watch the other one, you know, please. Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Beyond the Harbor R yourself, you can find it over on itch and you can find a direct link to it from the creator's Twitter page. I, I, I know they have a, uh, a Twitter page. Because they follow me. Yay. <laughs> and um, 
I don't know if they have a Beyond the Harbor R Twitter page, but you know, if there is one, I'll link to that. I can see that they do have a Patreon. And if you would like to support the project, well, you know, subscribe to them. And I'm assuming as a most as with most projects, you'll get early access to, you know, you know, builds of Beyond the Harbor or, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Because some people in their Patreons do do that. They give you like behind the scenes. Also, I do recall that the original Beyond the Harbor, because this is technically a remake, um, is available. So you see this little icon with the little moon and what I'm assuming he's a rat, I think. Um, if you click on it, you can actually play the original version. But yeah. Uh, I probably will do that, but on my own, though. I don't know. Uh, it does have, like, all the original, like, sprites and stuff, I think. The story is mostly the same, I think. I'm not sure. But anyways, um, yeah. So, I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.